Hey guys, I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to render proxy footage or low quality clips from high quality files in Adobe Media Encoder. So on this screen, I have Adobe Media Encoder opened to the left and just a finder window on a Mac open to the right. So I have a couple folders created, whether you're on a Mac or a PC. I've got a high quality uh, folder, which includes my high quality clips. You can see each of these are almost a half gig in size. And then I have a, a low quality folder, which will be where we render and save the proxy footage that we're creating. Now, the whole reason for doing this is because when you have super high quality clips or long clips that are half a gig in size, working with those in any video program like Premiere Pro or After Effects will become very tough for your computer to render on the fly. You're gonna have to be rendering with like low quality previews and things like that. So when you switch out and use proxy footage, you're able to cut and splice together and preview your clips very quickly. And then at the end, you can switch to your high quality footage before you render for your final export. So in this tutorial, let's look at how to create those proxy clips. Adobe Media Encoder comes with um, all the Creative Cloud versions. So as long as you install it with your Creative Cloud account, you're gonna have it to render out clips. So I've opened that up and this is the window that I have to the left. I'm gonna kind of ignore anything to the left, uh, this media browser, preset browser. The encoding window isn't one that you need to actively pay attention to until we start encoding. So the one that I'm looking at is the Q window. If you don't have that open, make sure you go to window and then select Q. So you can actually just drag files into this Q. So I've got my high quality clips over here to the right, clip one, two, and three. I'm gonna just shift click those to select them all and I'm just gonna drag them right on in. And they're gonna come in here and it's gonna kinda think about them for a second. There we go, we've got them in here. You've got a format, which I don't really need to worry about. I've got output file, which actually I don't really need to worry about either. What I need to worry about is the preset. And if I click on this blue preset, it's gonna open up another window. And in this window with this lovely footage of me on a green screen, I have Lots, lots and lots of things, okay? I'm just gonna show you what you need to worry about because not all of this is incredibly important. First and foremost, if you want video, obviously make sure your video is checkmarked. And if you want audio, make sure export audio is checkmarked. Sometimes I don't use the audio portion. I might use audio from a different clip, so it'll save a little bit on file size if I don't export with audio. Now I wanna go up to format. And a lot of times this, could just be preset on something, but I do wanna go ahead and select H.264. It's just a very standard uh, codec. I think, it, I think it's called a codec. Anyway, it's just a very standard format to use. But under preset, um, I'm gonna change this to something different. Uh, so instead of the YouTube 1080p HD, it's actually gonna end up being custom, and then we're gonna save our own preset. So if you want to start with something, as long as you have 1920 by 1080 footage, I want to keep it at that same resolution. So if it is 1920 by 1080, selecting the YouTube 1080, uh, 1080p HD to start with isn't a bad idea. And then we can scroll down a little bit on this media encoder. And you can see in this bottom portion here, there's a video tab. That's the one I'm really super concerned with. First off, make sure that this width and height match your video file that you originally had. If you want to match it real quick, you can hit match source just in case it doesn't match. And then after that, it may gray it out and you'll just have to uncheck things to re-edit it if you need to. But then what all I'm really going to do here is scroll down to the bottom and look at this target bitrate. And right now, I actually have an estimated file size of 407 megabytes, which is just slightly lower than our 552 that this clip started at. So what I can do is, as I drag this target bitrate way down, the estimated file size goes way down with it. And actually what I did earlier for a project that I was working on, went with the target bitrate of two. And I'm not sure if that's megabits or megabytes per second. Uh, I think it's megabits. No, I think it's megabytes. I don't quite remember, but it doesn't matter. I went with a target bit rate of two, maximum bit rate of two. And now you can see that my estimated file size is like 10% of the original file. That's gonna be a lot easier for my computer to handle. So from there, I can scroll down, just make sure that everything is pretty standard. And you'll notice that once we change that bit rate, our preset changed to custom. 
So if I want to use this same exact preset for every one of these clips that are 1920 by 1080, I can actually click this save preset right here. And then I can say that this is proxy, uh, we can call this proxy footage is my preset. And I can, these don't have to be check marked. We didn't actually change uh, some of this stuff. So I'm going to leave them unchecked in my case. I'm going to hit OK. So now I have a proxy footage preset, which is 1920 by 1080, but only a target bitrate of two. And that's going to really decrease our video output file size. So from here, all I need to do is change this last thing, the output name, and if I click on it, it's actually gonna ask me where I wanna save this. This is a bit important depending on which program you're using. I don't wanna save it into the high quality folder. I wanna to go to that low quality folder, or maybe it's a proxy folder, or whatever you wanna name it, and I'm gonna double click in there, and I'm gonna keep this name the same. That matters, I believe, for Premiere Pro and maybe some other programs. Um, so I would keep it the same. Obviously, if you change it and you find out you've got some problems with it because it's not the same name later, you can always rename it, but keep it the same and you'll be good. So I'm going to save that in that low quality folder as clip one and I'm going to hit OK. Now from here, all I have to do is instead of selecting the 1080p on each of these, I can just now select a preset and that preset is proxy footage and that changes everything for me. I only had to do that once and I'm going to make sure that I'm saving that in the right spot. So I'm going to select my low quality folder again for clip two, hit save, hit OK. And then we're going to do the same thing for this guy, which we may be able to just hit this drop down here, select proxy footage. And then over here is where it's going to save. So I can click on that again and select low quality in my recents here on a, on a Mac anyway. So I'm going to select that low quality and it's going to go in there and I can hit save. Now that all of these are set up to be proxy footage and into that low quality folder, I'll scale that out. You can see it's in the low quality folder. Um, all we have to do is hit play or hit the start button. And once it starts, that's going to just encode all of these files. You can see all this magic happening down here and it's going to, uh, going to work its way across. So a lot of this is just waiting on blue bars. I'll see you on the other side of this render. And we're done. That was really quick, right? If you want to watch the full, full render, check out the Daily Creative 67. I did a live stream where I recorded this tutorial. Anyway, what that did was it, we saved all of those into this low quality folder. So check it out. Originally, I had all these high quality clips 550 meg, 685 meg. Now they're down to 60 meg, 75 meg, 62 meg. You utilize these proxy clips in your projects and you're going to notice a huge difference in rendering time as you're working on the project. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to do effects and edits and all the different things you need to do inside of your video project file. And then at the end of that project, you can replace those clips with the high quality clips for your final export and you're going to have a real high quality video that was much more quick and efficient to work on. You guys, I am recording an After Effects proxy clip tutorial and a Premiere Pro proxy clips tutorial. I'm going to link them up to this video if they aren't already. Just give me a little bit of time. They're coming up. They're the next two tutorials on the channel. So make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tutorials. Hit that notification bell if you want to know exactly when they're getting released. Um, but this is sort of a companion tutorial to those two. So this is showing you how I render proxy footage, but then those two tutorials will show you how I utilize proxy footage in those two Adobe programs. Thanks for watching you guys, and I'll see you next time.